Hello, in this video I'm going to be reading portions of an article I wrote on my blog called A Biogenesis by Natural Selection. I'm skipping over some portions of it to keep it shorter and because these cover elaboration and further technical details rather than hitting on the main points. So I'm trying to hit on the main points and what I'm reading in this video. Creationists will sometimes ask evolutionists how they can account for life. And the response they sometimes get is that evolution is only about how life evolved into a variety of different forms and that it just doesn't deal with how life came into existence. I believe this response is short-sighted. Life is not the only thing that evolves through natural selection. We know that memes understood in Richard Dawkins' original sense evolve even though they are not life forms. We know that language can evolve. Likewise, computer viruses may evolve and actual viruses evolve even though we do not number them among life forms. Evolution by natural selection works with anything capable of imperfect reproduction, whether alive or not. This leads me to the idea that life came about through evolution by natural selection. Before any life existed, there were non-living replicators similar, if not identical, to things like RNA, DNA, and viruses. The DNA that we use to reproduce ourselves is not itself a living organism. In our case, our DNA includes instructions for building living organisms, and it relies on these organisms to spread it to future generations. Before DNA ever built any living organisms, and may have been in the business of building non-living organisms. Simple machines that would spread it further. And before DNA made any kind of organisms, it was just copying itself. However it happened, the complex DNA that began to build living organisms evolved through natural selection from more primitive replicators. But how did the first replicators get started? Replication is simply what you get when you combine the processes of growth and division. Division is easier to account for. As something grows, it will eventually reach a size where it becomes too difficult for it to remain together as a single unit. Think of constructing a house of cards. The more cards you add to it, the more unstable it will become and the more likely it will be for it to fall apart. So the main thing we need to account for is growth. The kind of growth typical of life is that it converts external materials into structured parts of itself. This is growth that happens through the ability to fit things into a structure. This doesn't require intelligence. It just requires a structure that is somehow able to sort different materials into different areas. Think of a simple coin sorter. You drop a coin down a ramp and it rolls until it reaches a slot large enough for it to fall through. So it will sort coins into dimes first, pennies second, nickels third, and quarters fourth. The likelihood of molecules falling into arrangements capable of structured growth might be rare. But at once it happened, just once, it could keep on going. The processes of growth and division would lead to an explosion of molecular structures with the same properties. This would normally lead to copies of the same kind of thing. But when errors in the process cropped up, it would result in slightly different molecular structures. Some of these changes would give the new structures the ability to reproduce themselves more efficiently than others. Also, the continued reproduction of replicators would change the environment. Two changes to the environment that would seriously impede reproduction would be overproduction of waste products and overpopulation. And reproducing themselves, it's to be expected that they would sort the available materials, perhaps in a simple coin sorter way, into what they can use and what they can't use. They would make themselves out of what they can use, but they would eject what they cannot use back into the environment. After enough time, they would be surrounded 
buy their own poop instead of the materials they would need to make more of themselves. The solution to the overproduction of waste products would be for some replicators to evolve the ability to use these waste products as food or fuel. After life emerged, for example, solar-powered plants overproduced oxygen, then oxygen-breathing animals evolved. Overpopulation could lead to the situation where replicators run out of the material they need to make more of themselves because that material has been used up in making them. The solution to this problem would be for some replicators to start making themselves out of other replicators. This would introduce predators into the environment which would make others prey. And then natural selection would favor advantages that made some better at catching prey or at avoiding predators. And this would drive an arms race that would regularly change the environment and select for greater and greater complexity. One new ability that would prove crucially important to solving these and other problems would be the ability to construct machines. I'm not talking here about human beings creating machines. I mean that something on the level of DNA would create simple machines that would give it various advantages. As the environment changed, replicators who were building simple molecular machines would have a serious advantage over those who weren't. For their machines could help them become better at adapting to new conditions. Over time, as the machines made by DNA happened to improve, natural selection would favor these improvements, leading to more complex and versatile machines. This is analogous to the growth of technology among humans. Our technology gives us tremendous advantages over other animals, and the machines created by DNA gave them tremendous advantages over DNA who didn't build machines. One of the main differences between us and DNA is that DNA is not autonomous. While we can direct the use of machines with our will and intelligence, DNA cannot. So the machines that would prove most useful for DNA would be autonomous machines, that is, robots. A robot may be programmed ahead of time, but it can operate without anyone exercising direct control over it during its operation. Natural selection would, over time, favor machines with more complex programming that could handle a greater variety of circumstances better. In general, it would favor machines capable of locomotion, energy production, waste disposal, growth, awareness, and decision making. As machines came together with all of these abilities, these machines would be robots capable of housing, sustaining, and reproducing the DNA that made them. And these robots would be what we call living organisms. It should be understood here that even a simple cell, such as an amoeba, is a robot for housing, feeding, and replicating DNA. While some DNA was evolving to make robots, other DNA was evolving to exploit these robots. There is no law of nature which says that the machinery built for the sake of protecting and propagating DNA must be used only by the DNA that made it. Once these robots are made, other DNA may try to hack into the replication machinery of these robots to replicate themselves. This is not hacking in the conscious sense that humans hack computers, since DNA has no consciousness, but it gets similar results. The DNA that evolved to hack and exploit robots made by other DNA are what we call viruses. These evolved alongside life without being or producing life. This is solid evidence that living organisms are not the only organisms evolving by natural selection, and it points us to what our prebiotic genetic ancestors were like. In a nutshell, life evolved from non-living organisms similar to viruses, and it did so by natural selection. There was no first living cell that appeared by intelligent design or by amazing chance. 
the first living things were robots built by DNA for, for its own protection, growth, and reproduction. And these had evolved from DNA that had built simpler robots, which had evolved from DNA that had built simple machines. Once the first living organisms appeared, their reproduction kept changing the environment so that natural selection kept favoring improvements. These improvements included preying on other life forms, avoiding and protecting oneself from predators. Using the waste product of another type of organism as fuel, division of labor, locomotion, sexual reproduction, awareness, decision making, and generalized intelligence. Through evolution by natural selection, the robots made by DNA became more lifelike and sentient, eventually evolving into us. For how the universe got to the point where this was all possible, I recommend, I recommend my earlier video, Is God Needed for Scientific Laws? And for more on how life evolved into us, I recommend nearly any of one of my other articles on evolution, which you can go to my blog and read. I wanted to point out at the end of this video that I now have my own Twitter account for this uh, YouTube channel. It's called at the love of wisdom. The longer name that corresponds with this channel was not available because Twitter doesn't allow names to be that long. And this account is going to be focused on free thought and philosophy, atheism, evolution, and humanism. And it will include original memes, posts, and videos, my YouTube likes and favorites, book excerpts from books I'm reading on my Kindle, and curated retweets. Uh, here is a meme I made earlier today, and I'll be posting more of these as I make more of them.